55 degrees outside the window on 8th Street, 92.1 WROI. WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Audio and video on RTC Channel 4. Tim is still in the studio this morning. Hey, again. Yeah. Round 2. Yeah, Welcome right? back. Yeah. Nice to have you here. And one Thank of these you. days, you'll have your own coffee cup. Yeah. Yeah. See, you'll be all set. Ready Moving to go. on up. Moving on up. <laughs> Sounds like another show. Yeah. yeah. Time now for our Woodlawn Hospital monthly report, and we welcome to the studio the Chief Financial Officer from Woodlawn, that's Dave Choger. Dave, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, it's my pleasure to come down, and you know, Woodlawn's an uh, integral part of the community, and we'd Absolutely. like to give back. Critical part of the community, no doubt about it. All right, board meeting yesterday. Oh, we had a lovely board meeting. Good. You know, a couple, a couple of things we talked about at the meeting, and that was... We we're having some changes with physicians, and you know, Dr. Hoff is retiring from practice after 40 plus years to the community. Uh, been a great physician, tremendous asset all the way around. Uh, asset that's one of my financial terms. <laughs> and a good one at that. A good one at that. <laughs> that's right. But uh, he has been very good in that. And uh, following along that lines, uh, Dr. Kevin O'Brien, who was family practice okay. doc in the Logansport area, will be moving into Fulton County uh, building and taking over the practice. And when will he start? Build it up. Uh, I believe that's right around April 10th. Okay. Time period. Don't don't hold me totally to it, but yes, uh, you know he, he is coming on board, and uh, we're getting a lot of positive comments on Facebook from people that have been. Uh, past patients of his, and that so that's going to be very good. He's an experienced doctor. Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, he, I think he started about 1984 okay. to 87, okay. and uh, that he's been in Bloomington. He's been in with the emergency room group. He's been a family practice doctor in Logan Sport. Had a good practice there, and he's moving back into the family practice line. And then he'll be at the Woodlawn Clinic right downtown, correct? That is, that is correct. Okay. And uh, then the well, other nice piece, uh, we have a nurse practitioner, Pat Nicholson. A lot of folks are familiar with her. Yes. And uh, she critical care nurse at the hospital for 18 years. Uh, had uh, wonderful service in the Akron area and with Dr. Negrero. Okay. And, that and she has decided to come back over to the Woodlawn family and will be and is starting today, March 1st, and uh, seeing patients, uh, I believe, tomorrow. So, okay. up and going. So, those are two positive things, and it's nice to see those practices coming in and the physicians getting back to you know, the patient's taking care of them. Okay. And I say that from a financial side. Sure, exactly. Exactly right, right. So, okay. Th then uh, from that, we ended up uh, going over the financial report for the month. This is the one I only like to do once a month. <laughs> you guys have got me twice a month now. <laughs> Keeping that up front. That's, that's Tim's fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I was like, all right, so blame it on Tim. But, yeah, uh, that's fine. You know, there, there are a couple ways to look at it. i got to be careful here when I say I understand. January has normally been a very slow month for us, and we had a loss budgeted for the month. We did a very good job in exceeding the loss. <laughs> okay. No, but um, for the month, we ended up with... Uh, about 9.4 million in revenue, and that was down from budget. Uh, ended up with five, a little over 5.9 uh, million in write-offs, contractual adjustments. 62% of what we charge gets written off through a contractual adjustment. And I, and I know in talking with John in, in months past, uh, he's trying to narrow that down if he can, trying to lower that. The best, it's a difficult thing to do. It, it's very difficult when you're sitting there and you know your uh, Medicare makes up 40% of your business, and that's pretty well controlled by the government. And even though I, we're cost reimbursed, according to Medicare, they only reimburse you what they consider Medicare medical care. Right. 
they pull out non-medical areas and say, well, that's your choice. So we have that, so it's difficult there. We did sign a new contract with Blue Cross this past year, and we think that was a benefit where we would get two to 3% more uh, payments from Blue Cross. The area said, uh, really looking at and watching with bad debt and charity care. Sure. Over the years, we would do five to 600,000 a month in bad debt. Now, everybody classifies whether it's Obamacare or Affordable Care Act, you sure. know, depending which side you're on. Uh, we have reduced that number down to 200,000 in bad debt. And our charity care has gone from 190,000 down to 46. And that's attributable to getting people into the healthcare network and getting them the services they need sooner. And we did that with a company called Claim Aid and we've uh, still continuing to do it. That's gonna be one of the big questions coming up, which which is the next change in direction the government's going to go, and are they going to repeal these portions that are getting people into the network? You know, it means anywhere I was looking at it over the course of a year, uh, $6 million to the hospital, but if you say you're reimbursed at, you know, 30%, that's still, you know, a million eight in cash to the hospital. So. It's, it's a big area and a big concern, but right now we're doing the best best we can in getting that down, constantly watching it. That the quick, you know, that 5.8 uh, in contractuals is greater than what our expenses are sure. at the hospital. So, and we have 4.3 million in expenses for the month, and uh, that had a loss at 770,000 for the month of January first month of the year we anticipate the loss and as we work through um, we're anticipating we budgeted out that the hospital will finish you know with a positive number now it's gonna be a challenge as we go forward but um, that's where we're at Dave one of our listeners had uh, contacted us here a while ago while we were in the process of talking with Congresswoman Jackie Walorski just about the uh, Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, whatever particular name you want to put on it. And they wanted to know, it seemed to them, in listening to these reports, that this has been a good thing for small rural hospitals. Would you concur with that? I, I would concur with that. Okay. And I'm not going to get too much into the political, no, I understand political sure, side, sure, but it has sure. been a very good thing for the hospital. It would have been nicer if we could have got into the marketplace a little sooner. It's a benefit to us, and in the long run, I think that is a piece that can either force hospitals, I don't want to say close, but change direction and affiliate and do some things that way. So it, it is a concern. And, you know, I, I'll say I've been at three different community hospitals in the state, and Woodlawn Hospital and the community that surrounds it has been great and very supportive of it. And it's like they go together better than any of the others I've been at. One of the things that, that's got to make you a little nervous is with all the talk now about changes in the Affordable Care Act, what will that bring to Woodlawn Hospital? What will that bring to the financial picture of Woodlawn Hospital? That is, that is correct, and until somebody can at least put a plan out in front to say this is the direction, you know, it's easy to speculate on anything. But once they put a plan out, we can see what it is. You know, there are millions of people that are now receiving health care. They don't know which way they're going. The hospitals don't know which way, you know. You hear repeal, repeal, but what are you replacing with? What direction? Uh, I'd say I've been in the business for a little over 40 years, and you see changes made to each program, but nothing ever gets totally repealed. The base is always there. Kind of what goes around comes around. That's right. <laughs> and that, as I, I think I mentioned earlier, and. Uh, 
you know, 1977, going back a few years, (laughs) before the great snowstorm. (laughs) I remember that snowstorm. Yeah. Uh, Hospitals were reimbursed based on a cost basis. Today, critical access hospitals are still reimbursed on a cost basis. Nothing's changed in 40 years. (laughs) But a lot of talk has gone on. Dave Childers, our guest, he's Chief Financial Officer for Woodlawn Hospital, bringing us up to date on the hospital report yesterday. Did that pretty well cover your trustees meeting? That pretty well covered it. Okay, let's back off to Dave Childers just a second. What does a Chief Financial Officer do for a hospital? What are you responsible for? It seems like everything (laughs) on a given day. Of course. No. Of course. Uh, Obviously, the main, main piece coming in is the financial reporting, sure. but then you have the investment side of the business. Then materials management and purchasing all the supplies and making certain that inventory is controlled properly. Then you get into, uh, I'll call it medical records, and every medical record person listening will say, no, we are <laughs> health information management. There you go. That's you right. know, so all the changes, yeah, right. terminology. Uh, responsible for that area and making certain uh, folks are getting the bills coded and all the doctor's notes and that they're correct and it's coded and then that information gets passed over to billing and uh, then the bills go out and then we look at collections on the bills you know how long does it take to collect Uh, you know we are the only industry that has a 50-day wait time to get your money once services have been rendered. You know, you would sit there and say, ideally, I want people to pay before they receive it. And that's one of the challenges is to get that money up front and to identify it. And then the next area is patient access, where people come in to register in that for their services and getting the correct information there because once they give that information the first time, it goes through the system and builds the files and uh, medical records and then billing and the floors, and then all of a sudden we see a name change or see something, you gotta change that. So those, those are the main areas. And I, then I get uh, dietary so I okay. can uh, Make certain we have good lunches for John. <laughs> <laughs> do you deal at all with the insurance company and the contracts that they have? Yes, I do. Okay. I, I get involved in the negotiations on them. We get involved in uh, just about any aspect of, of those contracts, uh, whether it's Blue Cross United, uh, the Medicaid replacement plans, they all come in. And, uh, and it's difficult on the side of which insurance company they they'll come up from Cincinnati and say we want to we want you to sign a plan here. Well, do you have any patients in the area? No, but if we don't have a plan, we can't get patients. So, I think we've run across about every name on the insurance line. But yes, we negotiate those, work with them. Uh, over the years, we've had some very good representatives from the insurance companies coming in and working with us and help us build the contracts. I know we had the loss in uh, January for Woodlawn, but at the same time, you're looking for a positive outcome by the end of the year. Woodlawn Hospital continues to be a vital asset to our community. Don't you agree? I agree 100% with that. And uh, one of the one of the things, uh, you know, we talk about contractuals, we talk about regulation, mm-hmm. different things. Every once in a while, you look for that little positive out there, and you know, Consumer Reports came up with a safety report on hospitals, and they did them throughout the country. Um, as far as Woodlawn goes, and they did 119 hospitals in the state, and Woodlawn's rated number two Excellent. in safety. So that Excellent. that is very good. It's very positive. And that'll help us in the future as they work towards maybe a payment system based on safety, based on readmissions and some different things that way. Do you expect some of those changes perhaps to come along down the line? Uh, yes, down the line. <laughs> down the line. Now you define down the line. Uh, 
it's it's later it's, rather than sooner. <laughs> that that's right. And you know, it seems like every time they have a change or they want to implement something, it takes five to six years down the road to really sure. get it in place and figure out what it is and how it's going to fit. And then what group of hospitals is it going to fit in? Is it going to fit in urban hospitals, rural hospitals, rural referral centers? There's a whole bunch of them. So it's a fun game. It's Interesting tremendous. times. Oh, it, it always is. Interesting times. Dave Cholger, Chief Financial Officer from Woodlawn Hospital. Dave, anything else you'd like to add? No, I think I've Pretty well done, and I, right. I could say I work for the best boss in the world. <laughs> John, John's a good man. He works hard at Woodlawn. No yes, doubt about he is. It. He's a fun person. Uh, if anybody stops out, you know, go in and say hi to John. <laughs> Dave, as always, we appreciate Woodlawn show coming in for the program, and uh, we appreciate talking with you today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right.